about the rules that we can still use today. And of course, I think it's very important and each, each rule is numbered. And this one was the first one. I think it is very important to remember. It says every action done in company ought to be with some sign of respect to those uh, that are present. And I think that's something we could all use today. Be sure to respect those and be kind and courteous to those who are uh, who are, who are around today. Of course, in the 18th century, there was the upper classes, and so people were supposed to show deference. So it was a different level of deference we show today to people. But I think it's important that we just just show show kindness um, and respect to some show some sign of respect. Uh, to those that are present. Um, another one, uh, number 19, it says, let your countenance be pleasant, but in a serious matter, somewhat grave. So be, 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 be pleasant when you're out in company, um, uh, but when you're talking about serious topics, you know, be, treat that treat that with a, with a level of, of um, Civility. I think that's something we kind of lack today. Um, sometimes I think we 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 um, kind of mock things maybe that are a little serious. But in in, in mixed in mixed company, you know, just just you know, let your countenance, let your countenance, your 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 behavior, your your facial expressions kind of reflect uh, the topic that we're, we're talking about. Uh, one of my favorite ones is number fifty three. It says, run not in the streets, neither go too slowly, nor with mouth open. Go not shaking your arms, kick not the earth with your feet. Go not upon the toes, nor in a dancing fashion. Basically means, you know, please, when you're walking out on the street, you know, don't go running down the street. You may knock somebody over. Uh, don't kick the, the earth with your feet. In George's lifetime, there was no concrete or asphalt, so the roads out there were all dirt, and you know, very, dirt roads were very, um, you know, dirty. In the in the dry weather, uh, in the summertime, it would get very, very dry, and so there'd be a lot of dust would be kicking up. Of course, they had pollen like we do today, so you know, pollen everywhere. And then also in the uh, rainy season, it would get very muddy, and in fact, carriages could get, get stuck in in. Um, the mud. So when you're walk when you're walking in the street in George's time period, and even today, you know, don't be you know kicking up the dirt, uh, getting it into other people's uh, other people's eyes, nose, and, and mouth. And I think this is this one is is very important. It was rule number fifty six. It says associate yourself with men of good quality, if you esteem your own reputation, for it is better to be alone than in bad company. And I think that is is something that we've all heard in one way or the other, maybe not in the flowery language of the 18th century of, you know, you can uh, tell, tell who you are by who your friends are, you know, run, be with people that will um, boost you. I think, I think um, today we kind of forget that in the, and especially in the very social media world where it seems like everyone wants to tear each other down, find people, um, your peers, your friends that will uh, boost you up, uh, who, who will support you, who will love you for who you are. And ever, uh, you know, those, those people who are, aren't very positive to be around, maybe you could, you know, maybe associate with, with other people. So I think it was very timely that even 200 years ago, human behavior is so similar that, you know, there's rules about, you know, Run, run with good people, find people who will support you. And George certainly found people who would support him. Uh, and he had, a, you know, he had his wife, Martha, who was very supportive of him during the American Revolution. Um, Mary, his, um, his mother, uh, though at, at times she, she was not, she would, she would tell George what she thought, but was always kind of giving giving him him that 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 balance that that he needed. Um, but I think of you know Martha running running um, the plantation Mount Vernon or when he, when he's away, and also uh, his his circle of friends, his 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 family of officers, he called them people like Hamilton, people like Lafayette. They were all very positive influence uh, to him, and without this support he wouldn't have been able to reach the heights that he did. You know, he needed that peer group to, to support him, to, to help him 
we guys and I think we all we all need need that group of of people to to um to be with us today. I think these are very timely reminders. And now here are some five, my some of the rules that though there are grains of wisdom to them, also really reflect 18th century life that we don't have to worry about today. And my favorite one for for um that shows life in the 18th century was rule number nine. And it said, sit not in the fire, nor stoop low before it. Neither put your hands into the flames to warm them, nor set your feet upon the fire, especially if there be meat before it. So don't spit in the fire because the embers, you hit it, the embers will, will, will um, kick back. And not only is that rude, but that can also cause minor fire, some embers popping out of the fireplace. Um, could set the carpet or other woodworking um, on fire. And fire in the 18th century was a major concern. Again, all houses are made out of wood. The only way to get heat is from fireplaces and they're not an organized fire department that we have today. So being cognizant of fire risks were very important. And when George was a youngster out of Ferry Farm, um, about 12 years old, it was right right before his father died, there was a fire around Christmas time out at Ferry Farm. It started in one of the main bed chambers um, and damaged, did some damage to George's childhood home. Uh, we know that uh, they, the family had to move for a while and stay in the detached uh, kitchen. Um, and while, while the uh, repair to the fire, to the house was being made, so it wasn't a very merry Christmas time so being, being aware of, of fire safety was very important in the 18th century. Um, also, you know, need to put your hands into, into the flames to warm them. It just looks rude. It makes, it makes you look like that you were deliberately cold and maybe are insinuating to the owner of the house that he's not keeping his house warm. You know, you don't want to insinuate anything negative on a a get a owner's hospitality. Hospitality in the 18th century, especially here in England and in Virginia, were very important. The fact that you could, you're opening up your doors to somebody else, you're serving them food, you're serving them drink, you're providing fire warmth. So you don't want to be rude towards your house. And um, do not set your feet upon the fire, especially if there be meat before it. That means. Again, um, some of these houses, uh, the, the main source of fire, the main room, um, was also served as the kitchen. And in um, and some of uh, er early European and early early colonial houses. So not only is the fire providing warmth, it's also serving as a kitchen. So you don't want to put your dirty feet that's been walking up uh, through the horse muck, uh, through, the, through the streets, uh, interesting, um, yeah animal waste, human waste um, are being deposited out in the mud. You don't want to be putting your dirty feet in front of the food you're about ready to consume. Very important rule, I think. Um, it, show, it shows um, 18th century life uh, and also things that we don't have to worry about today. Um, granted, they didn't know about germs or viruses, but they're getting an idea that certain um, waste or particles shouldn't be near food um shouldn't that that something in the muck causes illness they're not sure what but you know please don't put your mucky boots in front of the food um anywhere near the food 